I've been doing orthodontics a very long time, and over that period of time, uh, there has been frustration in finishing cases and watching certain teeth relapse. Uh, so necessity being the mother of invention, I created a spring to be able to move the roots so that they are parallel and underneath the crowns of the teeth. As we all know, we can tip a tooth forward, but if we don't bring the, tooth al the root along for the ride, then we're going to get relapse, and that crown is going to jump back over that root no matter where it is. In this particular case, we see this maxillary right lateral incisor, which is lingual to everything else. It's very easy to tip that tooth forward, bring that crown out there so it looks nice and straight. But if we don't bring that root along, i.e. labial root torque, as soon as we take the appliances off, within a few weeks, that tooth is going to start to jump back. Again, this is a perfect example of where to use the spring, because these are the things that you see happen once you finish your cases. An example of the spring itself comes in two sizes. It comes in small and large because maxillary incisors, mandibular incisors, and sometimes lateral incisors are not all the same size. So the spring just slides over the wire in the position on that particular tooth that you want and then with a special crimping plier, which is like an old 142 or ribbon arch plier, which is serrated, you go ahead and you just crimp on either side making sure that one wind, one coil is free to move and then you wind up having this torque places on the tooth, whether you want to do labial crown torque or lingual crown torque, or in a situation where you have a class 2 division 2 and you need to bring the central roots to the palatal so that they stay stable, it works wonderfully in that particular arena. The other thing that I should mention is that when you do this, you need to figure eight the six anterior teeth together before you put the spring on. That way everything is held in their new crown positions while the root's moving purely by itself. So another example that we see is we see palatally impacted cuspids like this. Once you bring the crown into place, it looks wonderful, but if the root has not come from the palate so that you've created a canine eminence, then you're going to be in trouble because that's where it's going to jump back. Sometimes if you haven't created enough overbite, you will wind up having the crown jump back through the bite, which is pretty embarrassing. So looking at how that goes, we have a spring here that's placed toward the incisal edge. We figure eighted everything together all the way back to the bicuspids in this particular case. And once you've activated that, what does it do? It puts pure labial root torque to that cuspid. And within 12 weeks, you're going to have a canine eminence. That makes life real easy rather than struggling with these because we do have torque in our brackets, but I find that it's not nearly enough, especially in situations like this. Lower incisors as well, if you bring them forward and tip them, and you don't have that crown lined up over that root, you're going to have that crown jump back and create relapse for you. So, therein lies the deal. <laughs>